Um, as I said in the email, I am going to work on, let me show you the pattern, Mrs. Claus, but they didn't call her Mrs. Claus, which I thought they might. They called her Posh Holly. You can call her whatever you want, but she's um, uh, Santa Claus's helper. And we did the Posh Santa. So those of you who are still working on the Posh Santa, because I know we got shut down and we couldn't um, work together on it and you're still working on it, this will be a good refresher because all the cutting's the same. We use the mini ruler. That's backwards. We use the mini ruler. So anyway, I do have some stuff to show you, but I think I will save it to the end of the live stream so that uh, more people are here to see everything. And I want to talk about, and I'll talk about it a little bit at the end, um, the opening of the church up again. I've, and so we'll talk about that at the end too, so we can get back to meeting in person. But I know some of you still won't be comfortable with that. So I will continue the live streams. We'll just pick a different time and day for it. Maybe it will look different. It'll be like the classes. Um, so that being said, let's do some mini curve work. I think it's kind of fun. I'm going to tip you down and get you set up to see. All right. Tip you down. I like that better. Oh, you know what? I want you to look at my shirt. You just know, well, my husband just noticed it. Peter noticed it. The ships are upside down. The fabric does go both ways, but whoever cut this out made all the ships sailing down. I didn't notice that till just now. You get to look at my so I guess he said we're in the top. Oops, that didn't work. Sorry. Here we go. This will be better. Tip the screen more. You get to see my southward facing. Okay, so if you want to make Posh Holly, all you have to do is go to So Kind of Wonderful's website, download the pattern. It's $12 for me to download it. You need to own the mini ruler, but those of you who have made the are, ma are making or have made the Santa will already own this. Um, you can also buy it on their website too, but you need both to do it. Absolutely need both. You need a rotary cutter, and I put a new blade in this morning so that hopefully I can cut super well. You really want a new blade. You can cut through lots more layers that way, and you can cut easily. I always recommend it. I'm just um, and you want, probably want a small, I have my small ruler in case I need it. You definitely need it for squaring up. All right. So that being said, while you were sleeping, no, yesterday getting ready, I cut out, ah, good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Laura. I cut out all the pieces that it said to cut out in these boxes. Okay. So I cut out the background cut out the hat. Um, I chose this fabric up at Bits and Pieces because it will be, I will be teaching it as a class up there this fall. So if those who made the Santa will have Mrs. Claus to hang next to them. And I hope that uh, maybe some of you will come up. And we hope to do the classes live. They're setting up a new, bigger classroom so everybody can be six feet apart. We can wear masks and um, we can have the class work. So they're working on it. I'm going to check in with them. We're supposed to be set up this month. I cannot believe it's September. Welcome to September. So where did the summer go? Oh my goodness. Where did the summer go? So let's get going. So you, it tells you how many. It tells you you need five squares um, for the main hat. We're going to start cutting with the curves. Five squares with the main hat. Okay. And you need nice, beautiful red. Then you need... Um, Six of the hair, and I found my swirly white. This is from Phyllis's when she had it in the store. Whoop. And um, and then four for the clothes. This is going to be her clothes. And that's it. Okay, so now, oh, no, because I had the face. Oh, and two for the face. Thank you, Sharon. Face fabric. So, 
what you're going to do is you're going to stack as many that you feel comfortable with and I'm just going to do them by the color that they are so that you can see multiple times. I'm going to get my chair out of the way. It's easier to stand up straight. Let's see. Is that good? I have to duck down because there's so much glare on the screen. Um, and stack them so that they are perfectly lined up or as close to perfect as you can get. Because who is perfect? Not me. And then we're going to put the ruler down and there is a V on it and she says that use the dashed V. So see how there's a dashed V? There really isn't a dotted V, there's a dotted line, but there's a dashed V. So we're going to put that in the bottom corner and we're going to put that right there and we're going to drop the rotary cutter into the arc and we're going to cut and with the new blade. Voila! And she tells you uh, keep, a, keep the number of pieces indicated in the diagram. And so in the diagram she says we need both of these for the face fabric. So I'm just going to stick them back there. And now we're going to do the hat fabric. And I like to have them it doesn't matter if they're right sides together, or right and wrong sides together. I just, um, if they don't need to match up differently, I just put them all right sides together because then when I'm going to work with them, they're all oriented right sides up. Do you have to do it my way? Absolutely not. There's three. I think I'll try three with the hat. Let's see how my new blade cuts through three. You can decide if it's easier to go this way. Or maybe you want, it's easier for you to go on more of an angle. I'm going to experiment here. It's been a while since I've cut curves. And um, so I have the dashed line in a corner. Dropping the blade in. And scooting around. There we go for the hat. And I guess we're keeping all of them for the hat too. So just start my little pile over there. I have two more hat pieces. That was a little more graceful cutting, I think. So let's put this down. And I'm gonna put that. There we go. There's all the hat pieces. Now we're gonna do the clothes. Oh, she put a number in there, four for all of them. For the clothes, we only need two of the big ones. Light dawns on marble head, but the numbers are all the same. Six for the hair and only four of the background for the hair. I haven't done the hair yet. Okay, for the clothes, we need four of the little arced curves. And the, and four, I call them the butts. I don't know. You can call them whatever you want. You should come up with a name for them. Maybe I should orient all my clothes the same way because this is kind of a directional print. That was not the smartest thing on the world to do, but we'll see. I have more of it, so if it turns out to matter, I will cut more. But for right now, I'll leave them all oriented the same direction. I didn't even think about that when I bought this. I try not to buy directional fabrics when I'm doing something for the first time. Oh, sometimes you just have to have them. I just thought this was the cutest little red, sweet little red print. They used it alone. I don't know. It did cut it all. Okay, so for these, we need four of these. One, two, up to four. But we only need two of the top of the butts. All right, I'll put them on top like that. Okay. Put them out of the way. These I will put over here just in case. Just in case. All right, so now the last thing we have to do is the hair. And especially with white on white, I find it super important. Um, oh, any news on Phyllis? She um, was being moved in out of ICU, which is a really good positive sign. And um, Sharon, who's here, she can type in more if I don't say it completely, told me, didn't reach Davy yesterday. Um, that she was able to move both her arms and legs, both of them. 
I don't know if that meant both arms and legs, that she could move her arm and leg, or if both her right and left arm worked and both her left and right leg worked, and her speech was garbled. But no matter what, that's pretty amazing for having major brain surgery like she had. That's like amazing. So I'm super excited. It sounds good. It sounds really positive. So I don't know. I will find out more today because I will um, call Davey because I need to go back over and help some more. But um, this week I want to go over there and help. So here we need four, but I only cut three. We need six, and there's three of them. Now we'll do the other three. So thank you for asking that. I meant to send and forward the email from Jean, but she hasn't sent a new one about her moving in to her room. That's so awesome. It means she didn't have to go back on the ventilator. She's breathing on her own. Okay, so sit hair. We only need we needed all six of these for the hair. And one, two, three, four of these for the hair. So that's what we needed for the hair. All right. We have cut. I'm keeping those pieces. We've cut all those shapes. Okay. The next shape it asks us to cut is for the trim on the hat and the um, pieces. So these are the four and a half by, I think they're four and a half. So they're the, the rectangles. I shouldn't tell you the sizes because if somebody goes on, they have to buy the pattern. So the rectangles, and we need from them, we need four um, hat trim. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Yep. So nervous I only cut three there. It'd be just like me. We need um, two collar. Look at this. I don't know if you can see it, but there's gems on there. Don't you think she would want bling, a little bling on her collar? And um, and then two background pieces. Okay. So here we're going to stack them right sides together. Okay, we are going to put the V in the corner here, and we're going to cut out on this side. And we're going to keep these. Now I find it easier to just pick this up and rotate it, realign the corner. Okay, you, if you want to just plop the ruler down on the other corner, you can. But they created this shape so that there's the le there's less waste. Okay, this is just the skinny little piece. So we don't. There's no reason to keep it. I'll throw it on my chair. Okay, so we're keeping all of them. Um, for the collar, we need four. Yep, for the background. Oh, for the background. That's kind of funny. We don't need all four of them. We only need three of them. But I cut the fourth one anyway. In the save pile until the project is over. These we need all of them. A little blingy collar. She has a little Peter Pan collar. It's kind of cute. I don't think people wear Peter Pan collars anymore. But I think that I remembered really liking them as a kid. Not sure why. I was not a fashionista by any stretch of the imagination. I didn't really care much about clothes, but I thought Peter Pan collars and saddle shoes. Those are the two things. And penny loafers. Those are the two things I remember really liking. Okay, there's our four gems. Now I'm going to stack all four of these together because I have a new blade. If you don't have a new blade in, I would not probably stack more than two. And if you're new to the ruler, I would start with one at a time. And uh, I'm just reading the, thank you, Laura. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to keep put this right here. All right. I think you can see it all. 
putting it right here. I'm going to show you how you can orient it without moving it, but I'm not going to cut it that way. I'm just not that talented with the cutter. I move it. So they show you just putting it up here, but I'm not going to, I mean, if you were left-handed, that might be wicked cool, but I'm not left-handed. I don't think it would work. It's not hard to realign all the four corners again and plop it right on here. The good news about the, their techniques is these pieces are slightly oversized, so when you, you trim them down after sewing the curves. I'm definitely going to demonstrate sewing the curves today. All right, we've now cut the rectangles. We've cut the uh, squares. We're on to the next page. We are just flying through this now. We have triangles. Okay, we have triangles. And then we have funky shapes cut off squares so and rectangles, which I think is kind of cool to see. So we're going to cut the background triangles, and we need 13 of them. So I'm going to make sure, again, that they're stacked right sides together. This is kind of an interesting gray. I know it's floral, it's supposed to be Christmas, but she could be dreaming of spring. Like, I, I don't know. I suppose by Christmas we're still wishing for snow, but not me anymore. I've reached the age where I'm not really dreaming of snow anymore. I don't mind snow, and I think it's beautiful, but... I don't spend my time dreaming of it. Okay, I've just stacked one, two, three, four of them. They're going to be 13 altogether. And um, so th this time, what we're going to do is we're going to put the triangle. It's a right triangle, which means a right triangle simply means there's a 90 degree angle here. It should fit swimmingly on the um, grid. One, and you can put it on one line and then the other just to make sure. Like for me, that was good. I looked down to see that was off. And then it has you, it's really cool. They're having you, they've gotten smart to use the ruler. Okay. And they're asking you to put the five, align the five inch line with the 90 degree angle. So I'm just putting it right there on the 90 degree angle. Okay. Just like that. And trim the corners off. So we're just going to take the corners off. They used to say, trim a half an inch off and that was kind of crazy but now you can just put the ruler on that line and trim those off now I could go and do all of them but I'm going to do that step with each one okay and now I'm going to rotate this because we're going to use this line and it's telling us to align the straight edge let's just see with the dashed what dashed line okay I gotta read this <laughs> I would have just put the corners on there but Position the ruler with the corners aligned to the dashed lines. Oh, I see. Here's the dashed lines going through the curve. So we're going to put the dashed lines. It works perfect. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it, but the dashed line is running on that straight edge. This solid line on the two inch is hanging in there, and then it's coming right up on the dashed line again. That means we did everything right. Let's hope we can do it. And continue to do it right and now we're just trimming that off we don't need that we need these and we need 13 of them so let's get cracking i wish i could like do super speed but you can't do that on, well maybe a smart person could do it on live stream put it up as a video or something yes and i could have cut some of them out ahead but i was busy getting ready for the show the show starts the 26th of september which means I have to have everything done and there and ready to be hung on the 22nd of September, 21 days from now. Well, 22 if you count today, right? And um, how many did I put here? Four. So um, I am madly trying to get everything ready and done. So I quilted the Moda Blockheads 3 quilt and I made which I can't wait to show you I didn't bring them in here but I will run and grab them they're not that far away unless Peter's on the phone in which case I won't grab them the um, whole cloth quilts they're tiny so I think you should be able to see them okay 
putting the dashed line on here. I should be talking about what I'm doing, not talking about my show, but I will continue to talk about it. Um, the solid two inch line, the dashed lines, the curves are, pop, are right in the corner. That do that. Here we go. There's four more, so now we're to eight. All right, so we have nine. 10, 11, let's see if we can do them all. Ooh, let's the brave, 11, 12, do I have more background fabric? Yes, like I don't like the way that one is, 12, okay, so what did I say, 8, 9, 10, 11, this makes 12, there we go, and this one makes 13, okay. Now rotating it. Cut the corners off. Oh, that would be we're putting the five inch line along the base so we have the 90 degree angle. Right triangles, just like being back in geometry. Okay, rotating it. Now these aren't all the same, but what's interesting about that is when I put the dashed lines on the edges and I put the two down on the corner, it's not going to really matter, okay, because we're cutting and we're not saving that piece, so I'm not worried about it because they'll all be the same now. So now I have the 13. I'm going to save this triangle in case, heaven forbid, I need it. All right. So... We did the triangles. Now we're going to take, um, we have two more squares of the hair pieces. Okay, I'm going to, and let's see what they say. Right sides together. So that's a right side, and that's a right side. Oh, and um, so putting those together. All right, right sides together, and then it says to mark a half an inch and two and a half inches. So we're going to mark a half an inch down from one side, so I'm going to get my little pencil here, and I'm going to mark a half inch down, just using a ruler, putting a little line a half inch down, and then two and a half inches in from this side. Now you could use, which quite frankly I usually do use, the... Um, the mat lines, but I'm showing you exactly what they tell you to do in the pattern because it's probably more accurate. So now we're going to put it so that the curve, the curve is, I can see the pencil lines inside the curve. Okay. I'm going to put it, I, I put this um, surgical tape on the back of my ruler so it doesn't slide around. So, you, and but you know, you're right side up if you can read it. And in my case, I know I'm right side up if the surgical tape is down there. So I have to, I'm scooting it way over so that I can get both pencil marks inside. I see one pencil mark there and one pencil mark there. They're inside and I'm cutting it off. And the reason we're going to put it right sides together is she has a right and a left and we need it to match that way. Okay, so there's our hair pieces ready for those. And I just saved these because she doesn't say we need them, but until the quilt is done, I have been known to toss a piece mistakenly. All right. So now the next is re smaller rectangles of the face. Okay. So we've got this here and we're going to, this looks bigger than I said, but no, nope, it's not. It's just my imagination. Okay. So I'm putting this right um, right sides together. This is a solid, so there is no right side, but I would, if there was a print on there, they would be right sides together. And this time we don't have to mark anything. We're just going to make the curves go in the corners. Okay. Just slipping the curves in the corners. Okay. This time we don't need this skinny little thing. Can you imagine sewing a seam on it? Nope. So we have our two face pieces. Now we need our mouth. Here it is, my mouth. Nice red. It's the same as the hat. I'm pretending she has lipstick, the same color as her hat. Okay, 
So now we need to, oh, this is super easy. We're gonna just put the three inches on the bottom here and so we have we're centering it between one and seven okay one and seven and the three inches go on the bottom three inch line goes on the bottom and that's going to give us exactly where the curve needs to be so there's our mouthpiece and the last piece we have to cut, I believe, yeah, and then we get to orient and start showing you how to sew curves, um, is the, another face square. Actually, it's a rectangle. Yep, okay, this is the rectangle. It's long, we're putting the length across, obviously it's the length. All right, and now this time, we're just um, aligning it between the one and the seven, okay? And we're sliding it down so that these pieces come off the corner, which is the two inch line, okay? It's putting the two inch line at the bottom rather than the three inch line. And dropping this in. And there we go. There's another face piece. Can't wait to see where these go. I always think it's so wild when I'm cutting these because I just can't even imagine. Now I need to throw away the pieces I know I can throw away. Oh, and I emptied my trash barrel. So much easier to use. Let's get this iron warming up. I kind of wish I could, um, let me take a peek. I used to have one of those ironing pads because I would really like to show you how I iron. Maybe I will try and take you over to the ironing board or I'll just show you. Uh, over here. Um, anyway, we've now cut everything. Pretty cool. We're now ready to organize the pieces right here. So they have hat background. In I highly recommend when you get to this stage right here that you write your color in. If you don't have a red hat but you have a purple hat, you just write purple on there. Your hat trim, like mine ha happens to be blue like that, So, and her hair happens to be white. My background happens to be gray, go figure. But my clothes are red, so instead of green, so I could put red. And her collar is white, so I could put white here. My face kind of looks the same. So um, that way, when you're organizing them, you don't get confused. All right? When she greatly, she beautifully has in the box, I didn't mention this, but she has space for you to write what your fabric is in the box. And I highly recommend you do that too. And you can write in pencil so you can reuse it again. All right, so now we're gonna lay out the A and B pieces. So I need three, it says I need three of the hat um, bellies, okay? Three of the hat bellies, like this, okay? And I need three of the background pieces. There's a lot of these. One, two, three background pieces. And they fit beautifully. Beep, right in there like that. All right. And then we need four of the hat trim. So I'm going to take four of them. One, two, three, four. And four of them go with background ones. One, two, three four. Okay. So there those go. Um, and then the hair, there's four hair and four background. So we'll do, we'll sew all the background ones here. One, two, three, four. Four hair. One, two, three, four. Background, four hair. And then of the background, we need just one of the belly backgrounds right now for this, and one with the hat. Okay. 
Okay, and four, there better be four, there are four of the hat, and four of the trim. These are all sewn the same way. We need two hair and two background. Two hair and two background. Okay. Now I'm going to have to stack somewhere else because I'm running out of room, but you'll see them. Two hair and two face. Two hair, two face. Okay, and then we need... Uh, two clothes and two background. Two clothes and the last two background. And then we need two collar and two clothes. Two collar and two clothes. Um, and uh, two face and two hair. Okay, I have leftover pieces over there. Not sure why, but we are not going to worry about it. We'll, we'll figure that out. Got a couple extra. Maybe I stopped counting. Put them together. All right, so now we're ready to sew. I hope that you can all see. Oh, look at these. These are my cool old new reading glasses that are done to a prescription, so they correct for my stigmatism. So there's no excuse for poor sewing here. I shouldn't tell you that. So if I make a mistake, I can't blame it on the glasses. All right, I'm just gonna pick them up. I'm gonna chain piece them through. Um, I am a spoiled child. My machine, when I um, have needle down, pops up my presser foot so I can move the fabric underneath. If you don't, you can always stop, pop it up yourself if you need to. Once you get going at it, you'll be pretty good with it and you probably won't need to do it, okay? But what they're showing is, in, there's a little picture, and I'm going to show you the picture right down here. There's a picture right here where you can um, see that you drop the piece down. So I'm just going to start from this corner and work because it'll be in the way otherwise. Um, a half inch down. You can see, I could put this here, and, but really just need to eyeball it, okay? Eyeball a half inch down. If you want, when you get started, you can put a pin here. I just put it in here and I start with my quarter inch seam. And as soon as I have it into both fabrics, okay, as soon as they're in both, I pick up the top one and I like this is light there's no pressure and I what I'm doing is just keeping the pushing this one under so that I'm always sewing a straight edge I get nervous I can just stop there's no reason for and you I'm only watching right where it's going underneath the foot I'm just lifting it up I'm not pulling it okay these glasses were really designed to be worn up all the way up and I really should it makes me sit up straighter they don't like to sit down on the bridge of my nose. I keep I try to explain that to them. So anyway, there you go. So we're gonna start the half inch down, okay? And I'm going to stitch till I am locked in there. Lift it up. Once I get both these through, I'll pull the other one up and I'll press it for you. Now they have, I, she usually puts pressing directions which way she wants it. But the cool thing is, oops, didn't mean to do that, but I'm, I can sew it faster. Um, the really cool thing is that you can flip them either way, okay? So let's just see what she says, how she says to press them. She says, press on back and front. Press seam towards fabric A. Okay, fabric A is the wide, the wide one. It's always the, in this pattern, it's always this wide one. So my iron just turned off, and I'm going to wake it back up. Okay, so I'm going to go press this. 
and I'll show you. Okay, here it is. Cute little curve. You can see it just lays totally flat. Now I could take it to the iron and press it this way and it would lay just as flat. Okay, you want to make sure you, like I do have a little ridge right there because of the way I pressed it. So actually, but here's the truth about that little ridge. When it's quilted down, it's never going to pop out. So I'm just going to leave it there. Um, you have to check for those. All right, so there's one. Let us, this gray fabric that I picked, go figure, is just a little stiff. So it's going to be a little tricky to work with. Um, but I'm always up for a challenge. It's not, it's pretty loosely woven, um, but it's got, it was printed on top. It was like painted on top, the design, which won't, my quilting machine won't like so much, but um, it holds it from being an unwieldy, like, um, super stretchy fabric like a homespun. It's keeping it from acting that way. So I almost didn't cut it. I almost just grabbed a different fabric from my stash. But I have to use fabric from the store because um, people are going to um, want to buy the same, make their quilt exactly the same as mine. It's kind of wild that people do that. Like one woman when I brought my boo quilt in she was like, are you going to kit that up? Can I make it? A... And I'm like, whew, yeah, I will. He said it won't look exactly like mine because I just grabbed fat quarters from the bin. 16 of them. don't have the binding on that one yet. I just dropped it off up there. Quilted it, trimmed it. It's a really cool pattern, the ghost boo, the boo quilt. I think I showed you the blocks. Oh, I might have dropped this one down too low. Let's just see what happens. It'll be good to see, you know, to see what happens to the pieces. Um, I'm not going to sew all these. I mean, that would be really boring for you guys to watch me just sew all these. So I'm just going to sew um, through these two two sets here. And um, I was hoping to put some stuff up on the design wall, but I don't think that's going to happen. I'm just going to show you of the different curves, pieces, and how they, and trim them, and how to trim them. And then um, I'll go on and show you the other stuff. Because, I mean, really... I should have done some of this ahead, but I just don't have the time right now. And I have to get this done, so this is really good. This is really sort of super helping me get this done. But pretty soon I won't, I'll just have quilting stuff to do but for the show. But I have one more quilt to make. I'm going to talk to you guys about it. Just kind of sneaky. All right, let me put a piece through here and I will move these other ones out of the way stack them all up and I'm going to press these going to going to, going to press them okay so I when I press I don't, let's see if you can see my ironing board if I tip you up all right you know what I might be able to bring you over there Oh, I just did something up there, which I don't want. There we go. So I moved it out of the way. And I want to, I really do want to show you pressing. I don't need that. Um, all right. So now you're on my ironing board. Ouch. There's some pins there because I was sewing little pieces together earlier. Okay. Clearly I use this as a staging area. Oh, look at that. There you go. I think you can see that. So when I first start, I know I want it pressed to the um, this piece, but I also want that um, super flat curve. So 
I'm just putting, I'm going to start on the right side. Can you see that? I'm going to start on the right side and I'm just gently nudging this down because you want to just sort of put it down. You don't want to, you won't have a smooth curve. I'm just gently running across the curve. Then I'm putting it down. But before I steam the heck out of it, okay, I'm coming to this side and I'm just giving it a slight tug with my left hand. Now I'm going to steam it from this side and I'm going to steam it from this side. Then I give it a check. And there's no little ridge on this one. That's because, see, this gray is really heavy woven fabric. Okay? So I'm, I'm going to just put a little nudge here. See, I'm going to show you that you can do it the other way. If, you, if you're going to sew it, to press it to the background here. I'm just nudging it here first on this side. And then it comes down flat like that. Okay? I'm not steaming this one because she wants them pressed towards the A. So... And it just flips right over, flips right over. It can go either way, just steaming it. Okay, two more to, three more to press. You can see three more. I'm sorry, I keep putting my ironing down, but I'm right, right-handed. I just don't, not super talented with this whole you can see me thing. Okay, so just touching the iron into the curve here, just with my tip of the iron. I'm not pushing it over because we know we want it to go towards the A. So now I'm just tipping, I'm giving it a slight tug with my hand, just ever so gently, coming back on the side, steaming it down. Do, 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 do. Okay, this one should be easier than I did the other one. Okay. Okay, now we want it to, this one, of course, wants to go the other way more easily because of that gray fabric is heavier than the white fabric, but see, it still lies right down like that. Coming on this side, steaming it down. Because the gray is so heavy, I'm giving it an extra dose of steam. Okay. This one's going to want to go the way I want it to, because the heavier is on the, up, on the background. But, and I know, I know I'm going to come and flip them some back because I like to nest those edges. They just pin them. I like to nest them. Go figure. All right. That was pretty cool. I'm glad that worked. All right. I'm taking you back. I'm going to unplug the mouse because it's so much easier to carry you over there without the mouse falling. All right. I think you're back where you were before. Tip you down just a little bit. Hopefully nobody got seasick. All right, I'm stacking my pieces that I have to sew together so I don't lose them. Here's the other one that I did. I'm going to make a nice pile of them. And we'll sew some of the other curves. And then I will show it to you all put together next week. Okay, so put that up there. So now we are going to take the hair pieces, okay, oops, Put. I'm leaving the so, so much, I'm actually going to clean this baby a little more, I'm not happy with this first one, maybe I should flip it and flip it back, I really want it to go the other way, oh yeah, so much happier, okay, so that being done, now we have the hair pieces. We're putting it right side up, okay? And we have one, it's really important to do it how the picture matches, okay? So this one is matched, is pointing this way. We're gonna start with this one pointing this way and this one pointing up for sewing, okay? And we're gonna take our piece here and we're gonna put the fat, we're always gonna put this curve out, the concave, and convex, okay? You go into a cave, right? Concave. Um, all right, and this one starts with the point. All right, so it's important that you do the picture because this is a left and right thing, okay? We need left and right cheek, okay? We need left and right hands. And it says to start just a quarter of an inch down on this one, so I'm just doing a quarter of an inch down Okay, 
and I don't know, scant quarter of an inch, whatever. I'm just doing a quarter of an inch. Same thing. I'm stitching until it reaches um, down here on the bottom. I mean, until it catches the bottom fabric. Lifting it up, lifting up the one on top, and gently pushing the one underneath. It's the same curve. It's no harder just because the piece looks different. Okay? It's the same. They're all, we cut it with the same ruler. We didn't magically make the curve tighter or anything like that. Okay? When it gets down to the bottom, if you want, you can use your seam ripper to hold it. I have an awl that I use sometimes, but I'm just, not everybody has one, so I'm just showing you with my seam ripper. That's how I started with the seam ripper. Okay, now the other way says start half an inch down. So I'm starting the half inch down and I'm putting it on there and I just am going to catch that point. I'm coming right in on the curve. Okay, it looks weird. It looks like it's not going to do anything, but only just catch it. Okay, then I can lift it up, push under. We're stitching a straight line. It, I know it was a curve. But it's a straight line. You're just going it right under the edge of your foot. I know I'm going a little fast, but because how many times can you see this? Maybe a million. I don't know. All right, right off the edge. All right, that's those two. I'm going to press them after. And then the next one is the mouthpiece going in here. So see the, her little mouth. She's smiling. We have to put this in here. Okay, so this goes on top. And this we're just giving it an eighth of an inch. That's a tiny little tail. You can check that little um, triangle with the ruler if you want. I'm just going to guess. I haven't actually ever done this one before, so the, the other mouth didn't. I don't remember the mouth working this way before, but I got to really get in there because I don't know how far down the face fabric is under there and I don't want it to pop out. So now I'm just doing the curve, lifting it up. Hopefully the start was good. I haven't done it before. We'll see. We're experimenting together. And I'm going to show you how to cut them, trim them. Okay, so. Run that little tab through. Leader, whatever we're calling it. Tab leader. I don't call it anything. All right. So now let's see how it says. Press on back and press towards the mouth fabric here. Okay. So we're gonna press this one toward the mouth fabric. Okay. Now this is kind of weird because hers. To, I, don't, I don't think I was supposed to have such a big extra on the side. So here's hoping that it works. These get. Um, press back in front, press towards the hair fabric. So this we're going to press towards the hair fabric. Okay, we have our two pieces, and you can see they would go together, left and right. And we have our wonky mouth. I'm hoping that works out all right. I may be doing the mouth again. We will find out soon because we're going to go to the cutting so I can show you how to do the cutting. Okay, let's grab these pieces that we did. Oh, my watch just said time to stand. Go okay, figure. All right, when we cut these pieces, you want this little wedge or little arc up in the right hand corner. All right, always um, for this piece right here, okay, for the first cut. And you're only cutting one at a time because you have to see where these pieces are, okay? We're gonna use the ruler and it says position the AB shape. The cool thing about this, there is a line on the ruler that is an eighth of an inch down from the edge of the ruler. And then there's a dashed line, which is the quarter of an inch. I just want you to see that because you probably won't see against the fabric as well. Okay, because it's telling you to leave an eighth of an inch from the curved seam to the outer edge. Okay, an eighth of an inch from the curved seam to 
the outer edge. So I'm putting um, the ruler on there, an eighth of an inch. I actually put a, I have a dot where the four inches are because these are being cut into four inch squares. So I'm putting that in, but we need to leave an eighth of an inch in. Okay, so I'm putting an eighth of an inch in. There we go. So that means that dot is on the um, that dot is on the curved line. I can can you see that? It's not an eighth of an inch in from this edge. I know I was saying in, but it you just want that dot right on that curve. Okay. And then I'm looking at to make sure there's fabric under everywhere, and I'm just cutting up and over and I'm rotating it and now it's a four inch square you've cut a million four inch squares with a square ruler I'm just putting it on the four inch line and then when a ruler moves like that you're realigning it and there we go we have a four inch square I'll do it I'll do a piece that I did already so that you can see it I'll do it one more time anyway for sure so I'm putting this on the, the dot on the curve, which is on the eighth of an inch line. It's where the eighth of an inch line, that solid line I showed you, connects with the four inch line. Putting it right there, trimming it up, going across. I'm just going to trim them all because then I can have some pieces to put up on the design wall. It's kind of fun. So. we go to see how fast this is to trim and look they look perfect when you look at this it doesn't look perfect but when you look at this look how perfect it looks oh my gosh and they're all the same because we're putting the dot right on the line and there's enough fabric they they're designers they've thought it through they've made it work their patterns do work and they do go together beautifully. They have come out with a new one that's a nativity scene and I, I really like it. Thinking about doing it, making it. But I'm not thinking about starting anything new till after the 22nd of September. Not until the show is all ready because I have to put up a list. By the way, I can talk about the show and trim these, I think, at the same time. The show is at the Hooper Mansion, but it's going to be online also. So that means you, Laura, you can see the show without coming and going anywhere. Or if you don't feel comfortable going into the building and you want to see the show, that just seems too far out. No, I did it. It's safe. Okay. So, um... You can watch it online. You can see it online. It's not like a virtual walkthrough. We have to photograph the quilts against a white background. So I need to find a king size white sheet, super clean. I'm going to buy a new one. I need to get it pretty quick. So I'm thinking about actually going into Bed Bath & Beyond and seeing if it's open or if they have curbside pickup. And um, I have my 20% off coupon. And then we're going to put it on our friend's floor. The woman, Nora, who's doing the show with us, me. And um, take pictures of all the quilts. So they all look the same with the white background. And we're going to, that, that will be online. So I have to create a price sheet for my quilts. And um, I'm going to put them up for lots of money, hopefully. Hopefully somebody wants to buy them. And, um, and then, so to create the price sheet, I have to photograph everything, and I have to have everything done. So, that, and I have to get the supplies to um, hang a shelf. So, all right, so those are cut into the trash. But I'm very excited. I am like a little overwhelmed right now, but very excited. So now we, that all these, all the shapes that you sew like this get cut the same way. Boom, 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 smack, smash them up, smack them out. <laughs> oh, 
I don't know what I was trying to say. I cannot do figures of speech. I always gotten them wrong. I'm putting the ones that are alike together because um, it's so much easier to put them up on the design wall that way. All right, now we have the hair piece here. These get cut differently, so I'm putting this one this way, okay? Because and then this one this way, just like we sewed this one this way and we sewed this one this way, okay? So we're starting with this one, where the line, if it, with the straight line at the bottom, it wings up on the top, and it looks so wonky and out of whack because when you press it, that curve goes off. This curve looks good, and that's what matters. So now we're taking this four inch. We're taking, we're squaring it up. We're going to make a four inch square again. Everything is four inch squares. Okay, so um, position the curved seam at the two inch mark. Okay. And again, there's that little dot, the eighth of an inch, where they those intersect. And it says corner on the curved seam. So actually, we're putting the actual corner on the curved seam. Go, that's really wild. Um, and the two inch is on the curve right there. So the two inch is on the curve. So we have to rotate it so the corner is on the seam and the two inches. So it's the corner and two inches right there. Okay. Hers looks way neater than mine, but that's because it's a picture that they drew. Okay. So now we're going to um, cut this off. And now when we flip it, we just are making this into a four inch square. So there's our first little face hair piece. I'll show it to you up here like this. And then now we need the one that goes the other way. Okay, this time we're putting tipping it up this way. Again, that corner is going on the curve and the two inch line is on the base, okay? And we're making sure, we can slide it up just a little bit. There's fabric under everything. The mouth is the one I'm worried about. The mouth comes next. I'm holding my breath. It's either gonna work or not, but definitely have enough fabric to redo it, so. Thank goodness. And the fabric supplies that they asked for, the amount of fabric they asked for, does have space in there. Okay, there's the other one. So you can see, it's like, if I put it together, she'd have an oval face, but there's obviously stuff goes in the middle there. Okay, so now it's cutting the mouth. Holding my breath. So it goes this way. This time, we're going to square it to a different shape, four by five and a half, okay? So, position the ruler on the piece as shown, okay? With the curved seam at the half inch, of course I have tape there, there's a half inch. Let me go up as far as I can. And the, and the five and a half on the edge. Oh, that is so weird because it's right in the cut. So that's five. Oh no, five and a half, I guess. No, five and a half is here. There's a little line. There's a little line there. So it fits. Holy camoly scoly. It fits. I'm moving that over because I'm not quite sure where the five and a half would be. Okay, you can slide it up this way. This is going to cut here and the five and a half. There we go. I, I don't know, this seems really weird to me. Because that looks straight and mine does not look straight. And then have the mouth tipping down. Okay, so I gotta read this again. And the five and a half half inch marks on the edge of the ruler and along the five and a half mark as shown. Okay, it's at the bottom of that piece. Do I have it? Alright, I'm going for it because 
If it's wrong, it's wrong. And we'll see. There's five and a half. See, there's like a half inch there. Oh, there we go. Now, light dawns on Marblehead. There's the five and a half up. Okay. That makes way more sense. Okay, so now I have to move it in. Five and a half, the five. This is the five and a half here. No, yep, half, 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 half. Right here, this is the five and a half. That is an interesting picture. All right, to say the least. And it's going to work. Holding my breath, but it's going to work. Okay, so now we cut it off. Now I don't have a wonky face. Holy camole. So now it's four by five and a half. So five and a half is there. Four is there. All right. Oh my gosh. I have a mouth and it worked. I'm like so excited. You guys, that was like so awesome. Oh my gosh, that was so awesome. So those are all the pieces. Okay, let me just tip you up so you can see me. My new glasses. I actually need to have them on so I can actually read the, um, the, actually I might be able to read them without it. Um, anyway. Those are all the curves that you have to make for this pattern. Right now, now it's coming into piecing the face, which I started to do, actually. Started to sew her little pieces together. These are her eyes. Cute. Then these are her, she, she wears reading glasses. These are her glasses. This is her glasses. I have to sew the skinny little piece on, but I'm going to pin it down first. And um, I have put it up, started to put her up. You can see on the wall. Sorry to put this up. And these will just go up here. That's her throat, so who knows where these pieces go. I'm just guessing. Maybe her hair comes in like this. Maybe it comes out. Maybe there's pieces there. I don't know. But anyway, she'll go up on the design wall. So I wanted to show you. I'm going to tip you this way. Let's show you the Moda blockhead. All right, do, 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 do. let's have it right side up. Um, let's see. I think I have to tip the screen down a little bit so you can see it. But I'll show it to you in halves. Here is how it came out. All right, there it is. Ooh, I have to go up on my tippy toes. Um, and I pieced the back. Those blocks that didn't work, they ended up in the back. So it's all ready for binding. All right, give me two seconds, and I'm going to go grab the whole clock, because I, I think you would really like to see them. You tell me what you think. Hold on. He was not on a call so I could get everything to show you. Okay, so, all right. I know there's lint on it. No, I haven't run the lint roller. But, okay, so in true form, this is a whole cloth. This is the way they did them. Same stitching on the same background. This looks like a square of navy to you. If I bring it up super close, maybe you can start to see some of the detail of the stitching. Really looks like I just walked whacked it out right then if you change the thread color it now I don't know if the if it's too glary is it too glary or can you see it you can now see the stitching or maybe I just need to be farther back who knows it looks really glary to me I'm going to turn that one light out Let's just see. This might be better. 
It'd be better to see it without the light. No, now it's too dark. Go figure. <laughs> All right, let's cut this bar out, baby. All right, let's try it. Not really. Those back making so much glare there how's oh there's the back there's the front is that better so um this is fun i bought the uh i bought the patterns for my digital design but i put it all together i put them together so it's my design but not really sort of all right, then here is the signal flag quilt quilted with the binding on it because I did that flange binding. I wanted like, I'll just show you the binding. I just wanted it. So when you do this flange binding, you can stitch it down because if you use the same thread as the background, it looks like the quilting, okay? So I just put it on there by machine and I, um, Sharon will recognize this fabric. Da, 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 that's the back. And you know, here's the thing. This is really crazy, okay? I was having, a, I had a meltdown day because I quilted this. And as I was putting the binding on, I noticed that my machine did not stitch out part of one anchor. So what probably happened is when I picked where to start, like the thread had probably broken. That's what I figured. The thread had broken. And when I restarted, I didn't restart in the right place. It didn't stitch out the whole anchor. And I probably said to myself, oh, I'll go back and fix it. But did I go back and fix it? No, it was probably the end of the day. Who knows what was going on in my life. And um, I'm stitching on the binding, and I see that part of an anchor is missing. Now, it's off the machine. I don't have the pattern. I didn't save the pattern anymore. Like, I mean, I saved the pattern itself. I know I think I'd actually even deleted the pattern, because when I put it on, I don't keep them. I would have a bajillion of them in there, so I delete them, like, when I'm done with it. So, I was like this hot mess. I tried to do it free motion on my machine, but I don't have the free motion foot for my machine. I bought this machine from Phyllis, and I had never free motioned on it, which doesn't matter. I free motioned on millions of machines, and, like, I was totally confident in doing it free motion because... But I couldn't do it because I didn't have the foot, okay? And um, I was like, oh, I can't believe this. Could have put, set up my embroidery machine. So you, what did I do? I put it back on my long arm, pinned it to uh, the leader, but it was right where the binding is, right? So I needed some space. And then I... Um, told the machine exactly where I wanted it to stitch. It's this thing called Mark. And I had it stitch. And I then Peter said, I'll see if I can find it when you're done. And of course he could find it. So you, if any of you see the show in person, I'll give a prize to somebody who finds the anchor that's different um, and where my mistake is. But I think to the average person, they will not notice it at all because I did it by freehand on my long arm. Blow me away. And I felt much better after it was done. We went out on the boat and had a stiff drink to celebrate. It was so good. I needed it so bad. So anyway, um, that is it. That's all the stuff I have right now for the um, show. I think um, let's talk about starting back up for those of you who are here that are going back to um, Tuesday. So I've reached out to the church. I've heard back from them. We can start back up. I'm going to call him probably um, this afternoon or tomorrow, depending on um, what my day looks like. And um, because, Sharon, I know you're on, I really want to come and pick up the other quilt and, or, and drop these off, my new ones, off to you. Um, um, and sorry, I'm making noise on the counter. So anyway, we can start back at the church. I'm going to call to find out what he his expectations are of our cleaning protocol, but he had the health department come and the room has been cleared for 15 people. We never have more than 10 anyway. So um, I'm excited because several people responded to my email about it and 
to that email that we sent out for this live stream and said they would come back. So I think we will have like three, maybe four people, which is a good way to start spread out and we'll see how safe we feel in the space. And I'm prepared to shut down. I'm prepared that, you know, the church, if the church starts having other groups in and we're not sure how clean it is or whatever, we'll just keep the conversation going. But what that means for the live stream is that we'll have the live stream next week and then it will move to a different time because I'm not asking anybody who's not ready to come. Okay. And so I will continue teaching techniques and sewing with you for an hour, hour and a half every week, which I love. I just love being connected this way and talking to people. And so, and we'll decide what day works the best what morning works the best because mornings work best for me and I um, and then I get my machine going and um, so let's talk about it and have a plan going forward I will send an email out um, tomorrow morning probably I'll have to craft it. it takes me a long time to write by the way um, and um, so that people can, uh, I know that people want the live stream still, but no matter what, I'm going to keep putting up videos. I'm going to put up instructional videos and I'm going to initially set them up as a live stream and, and I'll let you know when they are. So if, if there's no, um, desire for this to continue, then I'm going to do that. And those that want to tune in for it, I would love it, but they can tune in for it. Okay. You guys, thank you for being with me today. Now I need the mouse. So that I can sign off. Um, and um, I hope you have an awesome week. It's Labor Day weekend. This weekend. We're going to try and go someplace fun on our boat. Try. We are going to go someplace fun on our boat. The weather looks like it's going to be good. Right now, I don't see any tropical storms or hurricanes coming up the coast. So who knows where we're going to go. But... Um, Right now we're thinking about Situate for one night. Who knows? Plymouth maybe? Or um, I don't know. We're going to see. All right. Have a great week, you guys. Next Tuesday you'll hear all about our adventures. And I'll have more of uh, Mrs. Claus done. And um, maybe what we'll do is finish sewing her together. So she will be all ready to go on my long arm machine. All right. Have a great week. Bye, you guys.